Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Over a Couple of Drinks. Hello, Internet. This is the podcast, and we're on YouTube now. Yay. Yay. That's Yay. my decision I made 10 minutes ago. Hot to. Moving on up. <laughs> Moving on started up. from the bottom, and now we're here. Now we're here. What? what? I said started from the bottom, now we're here. Now, I okay. figure all of our side podcasts are on YouTube, but let's put our main one on YouTube, right? I know. Uh, yeah, why not? Okay. Yeah, speaking of which, if you're wondering where news you can use is, it's no longer on this podcast. It's gone. It's now on the top shelf. Sorry. So go check it out over there. And if you're wondering about what we think about TV shows, that's on the regulars and movies. So what's left now, Bill? What do we have on tap now? I don't know. Obi. What do we have on tap? Go. <laughs> Wait, hold on. We should introduce each other. Hi, I'm oh, yeah. Bill. I'm kind of the idiot hurting cats in this situation. Uh, with me, as always, is Mr. Chris Birch. Say hi, Mr. Chris Birch. Hey, what's up? Yeah, that's right. I almost, and- I almost said hi, Mr. Chris Birch, but that wasn't funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, somebody does that all the time. Like, LB! Hi, LB! Hey, how's it going? It, it's going. And our very special guest tonight, Mr. Blurry Pants, Chris Miller. I'm blurry. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, my lighting's terrible. <laughs> that's, that's that's rough coming from a techie like you. There we go, yeah. now we can see you. Look, you're fine now. I'm a lighting designer, and I don't even have light in my room. How <laughs> terrible is that? <laughs> uh... So we're going to fill a little bit of time and talk about what's up with you guys. How have you been? I haven't seen your faces in, well, it'll be in like 24 hours, but what's, 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 up, what's going on with you guys' lives? Who wants to start? Uh, go for it, Chris. <laughs> do we, do we, do right. we have um, a fucking schedule here? I, I am currently working at an outdoor theater company in Ohio. Um, I'm so sorry for your loss. It's, it's it's fun, man. It's 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 exhausting, but it, and it's I've got sunburn for days, but it's, it's uh, Ohio. but it's fun. It's <laughs> just and it's Ohio. about Ohio. Yeah. It's it's Ohio. Just Ohio. Have you been to um, Ohio LP? It's terrible. Uh, I've been through it. That was bad. Cincinnati has a good park. I've never been there, but I heard it's good. And there's Cedar Point. That's, Cedar Point that's, is there. That's, about, that's kind of its own thing. I don't it's really pretty much just Michigan. Ohio. Yeah, didn't didn't we adapt? Vacation it's ours now. We and they were like, "But you guys already have Michigan Adventure." And we're like, "No, nah, Cedar Point's better." So we're gonna. <laughs> Ohio can have Michigan Adventure. <laughs> <laughs> Call it whatever you want. Uh, Chris, you moved. Yes, I did. Uh, I was living in Chicago for a few years, and then I just hightailed it down to Kentucky, which was really weird for me because it's the South. Uh. Picked up a pretty decent job running a lighting department at a production company. Uh, it's exciting. Way more work than I am used to being responsible for. But it's not beyond my, you know, uh, just kind of eats into my video game time and that kind of sucks. <laughs> I mean, really, that's about the worst part of it. Everything else is pretty good. There will be. You're planning a wedding. I'm planning a wedding. Yeah, it's mine wedding, my own wedding. I'm planning. I'm not, it's not a new profession. Oh, surprise! Uh, that's surprise. Yeah, yeah. Planning a big wedding in in four months' time. Now, less than sixty days left, so that's cool. Um, I am producing a newscast in in a Michigan city. <laughs> Let's not tell people where it is. <laughs> yeah, that's what I do. That's it. Wow. But I, I I write things and people say them on TV. It's it's cool. Right. Uh, <laughs> what are what are you doing, Bill? Uh, let's yeah. the, let's see what it. happened recently in my life since you guys haven't seen me on YouTube for a while. Well, my car broke down, my AC unit broke down. Uh, I feel like we've had that problem before. Oh, Becky's car broke. My wife, her car just broke tonight. <laughs> oh. And this is my cat. So are you? Nope. He just he was like, pick me up. No, just kidding. Roll. My, my cat broke down. My cat broke down. <laughs> it's a great fucking day. Great fucking day. <laughs> what? So if anyone would like to uh, to go on Reddit and have uh, send Bill a pizza or something, like or whatever you guys do, that would be great. And cause... um I'm wearing a Hawaiian shirt because I don't care. Yep. Plo Koon says, what up? Bill, I'm wearing a flannel shirt and it's like 85 degrees in here. Right I know. Now. What's wrong with you? <laughs> I don't know. Oh man. What's everybody drinking tonight? Let's let's get on. Let's let's veer this on topic. 
Chris Miller, what are you drinking? I am drinking 10-year-old aged Russell's Reserve uh, because since I'm from Kentucky now, I have to drink bourbon. I learned that on the TV. On the TVs. Um, on the TV. I'd say it's kind of like Maker's Mark, but a little bit spicier. It's pretty good, actually. Birch, are you drinking anything? Uh, I'm on the continuous uh, theme of being the lame one, and I'm just I'm hitting up some water right now because it was a long day. You're a, you're a driver. Don't worry, I'll drink for you, man. I, yeah. LB, thank you. LB, what are you drinking? Um, today, just moments ago, because I had no other choices, I invented a great drink. It is chocolate milk, excuse me, Nesquik, um, with a splash, <laughs> and by that I mean a heaping shit ton of pumpkin spice Kahlua. Oh, I was Nesquik expecting Kahlua. Spice season way already? Worst. <laughs> no, 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 in a Cinderella cup. Yeah, I'll take that right on. I'm, I'm drinking gin and Dr. Pepper. Yeah. Does that combination work? Oh, you you weren't here for this story. Our good buddy Matt Happy Hap turned me on to this, uh, this booze called New Amsterdam Gin. It's like the kind of not really cheap but n- not expensive gin, and it doesn't suck. It's not really dry. And if you mix it with Dr. Pepper, it tastes like tutti frutti jelly beans. So it doesn't nice. taste like pine salt. Yes, that's why I got it. That's always So I'm, I'm drinking tutti frutti on Rudy. <laughs> what? Good. Well, good. <laughs> I don't remember the rest of the words of that song. They were starting no, out. No, no, there are no other words. They pretty much just repeat that over. Too and fruity. Oh. <laughs> Too <and> fruity. Oh, <laughs> fruity. Hashtag introduced to that song to the Brave Little Toaster. What up? What up, Brave Little <laughs> oh, Shiza. Oh, hold on. For all you new kids, the Brave Little Toaster, um, you would know it as Toy Story 3. Wah, wah, wah. Same movie. Yep. I didn't even really think about <laughs> Table that. Table flip. <laughs> <laughs> Except in, okay. instead of a instead of a, a lovable stuffed evil bear, you just have eighties technology. <laughs> you just have John Lovitz on a radio. Yeah, that's true. Which is awesome. And instead of a fiery furnace, you have a um, a car crushing machine that's gonna kill a man. <laughs> The movie's terrifying. Yep. <laughs> With an awesome song while doing it. Uh, like, what's the song during the car crushing machine? Uh, they're singing up like it's. I don't remember how it goes now, but it, look it up on YouTube later. It's, it's yeah, really it's kick great. Ass. Okay, because all I all I really remember is it's a B movie show, which that song is amazing. That one's great. The other great one is the car smashing one. It's also really kind of fucked up. Here comes it, the night. Somebody yeah, because I... turn on the light. <laughs> yeah, traumatizing. That, that's like... what we grew up with, ladies and gentlemen. Yep, that's why we're the cynical bastards we are. It's true. Speaking so. of traumatizing, a brave little toaster. That air conditioner. Yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, man. He killed itself. <laughs> Mister Freeze. I, I don't know I about you guys, but do you guys always freak out when you're vacuuming about running over the cord, like I do because of that movie? Yes. My, my wife is giving cold. me the yeah huh uh huh look. Yep. Uh, so let's. Now we've dived into our childhood fears. Yeah, <laughs> now that we've done that, hey Birch, why don't you break down what we're talking about tonight? What's on tap? Let's do it. On tap, we got uh, some nerdy slash learny YouTube videos, uh, movie TV actor Trump cards. Uh, there's the opposite of that. We got the anti Trump for actors, Jurassic World controversy that I wasn't completely aware of. Uh, Bat God Problems, and Remakes the Game. So, Chris Miller, what would you like to start with? Why do I go into a Scottish accent when I say your name? Oh, you it's do? probably because I'm Scottish. Okay. Chris Miller, what do you want to start Chris, with? Uh, honestly, uh, the one that's most exciting to me is uh, Remakes the Game. Okay. Um, we touched on this briefly during last week's Top Shelf and probably some other time somewhere. Um, this generation has, like, the most remakes ever kind of thing. And is it becoming a problem? What do you guys think? Especially with the, the announcement of the Final Fantasy remake slash redo slash changing slash whatever. Okay. I'll just put it by two cents on that one. That might make me buy a PS4. I, I mean, I'm not going to lie. Uh, 
Final Fantasy games have made me buy every PlayStation true. Uh, generation okay. that has ever. Final Hallway 13. Uh, <laughs> I still. Of, of my roommate's dismay, two of which are on this podcast right now. Um, but I am really excited for the remake of Final Fantasy VII because they're bringing back the original artistic director and I believe the original director of the, I guess, the story. Uh, and that's exciting to me. Because one, I there are a few holes that I think they could have fixed up uh, in the first one. Don't fanboy hate me because, I mean, don't get me wrong, I love that game. I played that game maybe 10 saves of 99 plus hours over again because I'm a nerd. Uh, but I'm excited for that game again because there were a few things that I think they didn't do that I hope they pull together and I would love to see the graphics rebuilt. There are a lot of other games that are being remade that I don't feel the same way about, but Final Fantasy 7 I think I can get behind. Remind me, this is, it's not just going to be like, hey, we have better graphics now. Like, it's actually like a remake, remake? It's, as far as I, well, I mean, they've, they haven't really announced a lot about it. They, they just announced a CG, uh, like a full CG video that was only a few minutes long. However, they okay. didn't go into a whole lot of detail at E3, which was the only official announcement I know of. Unless LB is looking at the camera like I might be mistaken. No, uh, I just Bill disappeared. <laughs> disappeared oh, for a second. That's Yeah, I was kind of... Yeah, I was a little concerned about that too, but... <laughs> um, yeah, it's as far as I know, it's a remake, and they're trying to keep it somewhat, or like at least tied to the original. Um, but, again... There hasn't been a whole lot of information put out there for it because it's still expected to be a few years out as far as I know because all that they've released is just that one CG clip. Mm-hmm. Okay. But I'm still excited about it because I'm a fanboy. I can't, I can't help it on that one. There's not many well, things that I hard fanboy on, but that's it. Wouldn't be a recording without something breaking. We're back. That was the at least we're breaking. consistent. Yes, at least we're consistent. Yes. So um, the last thing we heard was Chris Miller saying something along the lines of "I'm a fanboy," and then Bert started to say something, and my audio dropped. Uh, basically, what I was saying is that I'm uh, I'm buying a PS4 anyway because of King of Hearts three. So then I'm just gonna add this remake to my list and hope it's good. So. And then LB was saying something, but that was lost audio. Uh, I've said I've never really been a big Square Enix fan. It's fair. Uh, their RPGs. I mean, I don't. I just don't care for them. Okay. So I don't really care about this remake in particular. And I'll never own a PS. I'm, I mean, it's gonna come anything, out on PC anything, PS, anything. So. Yeah, it's gonna yeah, come PS out on PC. In. So, but it's just not gonna come out as soon on a PC. So, yeah, right. They're gonna port it within like three weeks. It, Hackers it, everywhere. They want to print money. Um, so you want to see what I own of Final Fantasy? I have it right here. It's the beginning of end of all my Final Fantasy owning. Oh, I'm concerned. Is it 10? <laughs> oh, Bill. Nice one, Bill. Look, oh, look. Bill. I'll defend this movie. It's, it's not even Advent Children. Advent Children it's... was trash. It was yeah. garbage. <laughs> <laughs> all right. But at That's... least it, that came out, like, with... When it was popular. Look, that story <laughs> was really good. That movie story gonna, was great. I'm not going to lie. I went and saw Spirited Away. In, or not Spirited Away. Whatever. The, Sp Spirit Spirit Within. Within. I saw that in theaters. Um, I did too. Yeah. I liked the story. Uh, it was interesting. I, bar I barely think it's a Final Fantasy anything. It just had really good CG graphics for the time. Actually, it had phenomenal CG graphics for the time. Yeah, I remember the time people were even like, is that real? <laughs> yeah, well, that, oh, that hurts my soul. Yeah. <laughs> they just filmed this. Look, <laughs> look my, my problem with the Final Fantasy VII remake is that, one, it's a remake. And two, it's going to just bleed over into what Advent Children was and, like, Dirge of Cerberus over the top. Um, Meh. 
where it just it becomes so ridiculous that I don't care anymore about the action. As stated, though, they are bringing back the artistic director and the director of the story. I have no faith. I mean, fair enough. It is Square Enix and the Enix side of things, as stated before when we crashed, uh, has ruined everything. But I mean, they are uh, making killer Hitman games, so I don't... I, just, I, I haven't played enough of them to decide if their story is worthy of an RPG, though. Yeah. Uh, they kill people pretty good, though. Yeah, it's just... Well, let's talk about other remakes that are coming, not just the Final Fantasy VII game. Are remakes a problem recently? Like, how many times have another favorite uh, series of, for Birch, uh, Kingdom Hearts, been remade? Technically, <laughs> the, those aren't Remake. remakes. Technically, they're either re-releases or they're side games. Um, yeah, but but there, are, there, there hasn't technically been a remake yet. But yet I know what you, I know I know what you, yeah yeah eventually um no I know I know what you mean um uh it, it it's it's kind of jarring actually I think for a lot of new fans to that series it, I was talking about that in particular when you look at it and you're like which t- <laughs> what do I play here like which of, if I want to actually get started on this what do I play and the end the, I think they're trying to make that simpler with the re remake re releases all on the same system but. No. It's not working. It's looking good. Now I'll show my hypocritical side um, by saying that I totally want Black Mesa, which is the fan remade Half Life in the Source Engine, more. Mm-hmm. Um, but then there's things like uh, Sacred Fandango, which had the HD remake or whatever it's called. I don't know what it's actually called, but it didn't HD anything. All it did was make the game playable on modern mm-hmm. computers. They did nothing else. They didn't change the well, control wasn't, schemes. Wasn't or... that the same thing with the first remake of Final Fantasy VII? Wasn't it just yeah? That was just same a port. game, just just a port. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's what that's what the Grim Fandango is. It's just a port. Or um, uh, I don't I don't know. I haven't played the the PC release of the GameCube remake of the remake of Resident Evil. That's a prime example of the remake of the remake of the remake of the game, which had a remake called the Director's Cut. Um, oh, there's too many levels. We're going too deep. <laughs> or, um, oh, God, what was another one? Oh, ones that were done right was, like, the Monkey Island ones. Have you guys played the Monkey Island remakes? No. I haven't played Monkey Island in a long time, but I don't think, like, I mean, that's a that's a game that I think can be remade pretty but, effectively. No, they, they remade them on the Xbox Live Arcade, in which you press a button and it goes from the pixel art to this, like, hand-drawn CG stuff. Is and it's the a, same game. Was that really a remake then, or is it just a graphical update? Well, remake, HD remake, same thing, remake. Uh, well, I mean, essentially, the remake's being used all over. I mean, what's a remake yeah, to you guys? Okay, fair enough, fair enough. I I mean, mean, a remake is rebuilding the game from the ground up and adding new elements, taking elements out. To me, a remake is just an HD remake. Oh, okay. Then I guess... Mm, that they changes things. Take out the Y materia, man. <laughs> Sorry, Final Fantasy reference. I'm just saying, are remakes becoming oh. a problem? Instead, of, it's like it seemed like with this generation of consoles recently, since they don't have backwards compatibility, remakes have become the thing. That well, honestly is the shittiest part of everything: is the fact that they don't yeah. make them backwards compatible, and there's not a good reason not to. Just like with the original version of the PS3, it was backwards compatible. And they actually took that out in Generation 2 of the PS3. So, like, it's not like technology is unable to be backwards compatible. They're just kind of shit. And, and yeah, before well, everybody been... gets on our case, we know Xbox said Xbox One will become backwards compatibility at E3 this year, but... Well, it shouldn't have taken that long anyway. Thank you. I mean, it... They're making it sound like it's a big deal, and it's like, oh, great. Now we just have what, what you should have just had as a basic thing. Yeah. Like, But you know what? Between backwards compatibility and Fallout 4, I am now going to get an Xbox One because of those two things. Why? If you just have a good computer. See, that's really the kind of question at this point anyway. 
I say if you have a good computer and you have three to six months patience, is it really even worth getting any of the systems? Because you can make computers for, or, or at least upgrade most of your own computers to have a better graphics capability, and then you'll be able to mod the games to make them even prettier or do a lot of other things that, f I'm not going to say fix problems, but what? change them to make the user, like the user experience more effective for the way you like to play games. Well, not to mention that, like, if there's a big enough fan service, the modders will go out there and fix major bugs before developers get to it. Case in point, look at Dark Souls on the computer. There's a mod to make it playable for PC users via the um, uh, console. I mean, for the PC users, not not by the patch or the Saints Row. There's a mod, Saints Row 2, for the PC. You have to get this mod to play it functionally on a PC. So there just comes a point where, um, you know, if there's a big enough market for it, I mean, if there's a yeah. big enough fan service, you don't have to wait that long for it to work. I, I think one of the prime examples in the last, like, few years is Skyrim. Yes. Um, cause Sky, I mean, not to just go into Skyrim mods and go nuts, but if you got Skyrim on the PS3, uh, for example, which... I'll say arguably had the best graphics of the consoles of the last generation. Um, even just a standard computer run of it in a higher graphic setting just blew it out of the water. And in the PS3, like, I mean, my PS3 had a few issues due to a lot of reasons, but, uh, like, it would have lag issues just by jumping into water. Yeah. And my computer never had that issue and it's like so if you have a little bit of patience one other people will fix a lot of like the gaming problems uh, relatively quickly but man do i want final fantasy as quick as possible i'm i might be willing to drop money on it even i'm i don't know if i'm that patient you you waited seven years you can wait a little bit longer yeah that's what people tried to tell me about starcraft too StarCraft II is different. We waited how long for that? 11 years for yeah. the announcement. For the announcement. Well, I mean, People, again... Final I'm Fantasy nerds convinced. need to pump their brakes, all right? Oh, yeah, right. How many I, games have they pumped out? Do you think there's brakes on Final Fantasy fans? I'm saying they need to, they need to, they need to be like, Oh, we waited it's X amount of years. Why I mean, waited X plus one for a new Doom game? You don't see me going, Oh, my God. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm not, I'm not, I'll say, if you were a hardcore Doom fan, I played, you, you're, you're about as diehard as the hardcore StarCraft fans. Doom, like, Doom 1, first game. Love Doom 2. I love Doom 3 to this date. I think it was an amazing game. And this new Doom, I love it. I want it. I need it. Inject I it never, into my blood. I never played the new Doom. However, I watched enough people that shit terrified by playing that game that I got enough enjoyment out of other people buying it and playing it near me. Like, it, honestly, the remake of that game was great. It was great to watch people play. Uh, again, I didn't play it, so I don't know how the gameplay is from a personal standpoint, but I got a lot of enjoyment out of that remake. It, I mean, I'm not going to necessarily say it was worth the wait, but I'm happy they did it. Okay. I think we uh, ran this remake some to the ground, like the video game industry. Oh, we picked the next topic. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Let's go with uh, movie and TV actor trump cards. Chris, this was your topic, so why don't you lead it? Miller, not Birch. Okay, so, I mean, I know LB and Bill know one of my biggest uh, trump cards in any movie. I don't know if you know it. Uh, and this actually could lead to another conversation we were having a little bit earlier. Uh, Johnny Linguizamo. Uh, Johnny Linguizamo! I, I've seen maybe one movie that, okay, maybe two movies that I would say are just straight questionable movies that had him in it. However, because he was in it and because his contribution, I loved the snot out of those movies. And that last one was a little bit intended. Did you uh, did you see um, John Wick? No, I haven't seen John. He's Wick. He's in it. 
Oh man, <laughs> he's in it just to like pump up Keanu Reeves' character. It's amazing. <laughs> it's the best. <laughs> when I saw it in the theater, someone, John Leguizamo, you're in this movie. Okay, like, so, and uh, like, I just got to throw a little something in there. On that note, one of the worst movies I've ever seen that I absolutely love is The Pest. The Pest is terrible. Uh, it's yeah, I see you, LB. Deal with it. Um, it is a terrible movie by all standards but i love watching that movie and i can i say it's probably been like four years since i've actually sat down and watched the whole thing i could still probably do that opening rap if i had the music to it <laughs> like it's there's just something about that movie that i even though it like it's just a bad movie but it, he's just a trump card and he just makes those movies so enjoyable for me like every movie that he's a part of even if he's just a goofy ass side character Mario hold, hold one second oh okay oh, should should be I, I feel going? abandoned you know I, I will say by one, oh, there, yeah, it is. there it is I just watched that like I'll still watch it Three months ago, my sister I love that. that movie. It's a god awful there, movie, and I it, love it. It has it has merits, and it's so much more fun than a lot of movies that I've seen the past ten years. So there's yeah. that. I there was a long period of time where I was just like, "That's a terrible movie. I don't think I ever want to watch it again." But every time, like I I watch that movie about once every other year, <laughs> and again, I enjoy it every time. John Leguizamo. There's just, there's just something about yes. it. I barely consider it a Mario movie. It's not. But I like not. watching that. Well, it's the closest just, we got. It. It was, so are you asking us what's our trump cards for movies? I would love to have a discussion about what you guys are trump. I was expecting a razz more. I mean, I saw LB's reaction to it, and I know that he thinks that some of my decisions there were terrible, but uh, you know, at you, least with the pest. You the made pest a good terrible. You made a good point, though, because I thought about it, and I saw Kick-Ass 2, which was absolutely terrible, but John Leguizamo was the best part of the movie, and Romeo plus Juliet, the John Leguizamo, uh, John Leguizamo was the best part, well, not second best part of that movie. Yeah, it's, it's so weird, because like, I don't like a lot of the movie season for movie's sake, but there's just something about it that makes it rewatchable because he's in it. I mean, he's just one of those. He's one of those like trump card, like hidden trump cards. So, uh, what 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 sets up a trump card for you guys? Let's let's go around here. Uh, Birch, since you've been mostly quiet, what sets up a trump card for you, and who are your trump cards for movies? Uh, for me, a trump card doesn't necessarily save the movie. I'll say that. Um, what it does is it gives me a reason to pay my money to watch said movie and probably get something out of it. Um, and for me, Paul Giamatti is like my number one trump card because he's done some shit movies. And, but I don't care because he was the rhino and he was fucking awesome as the rhino in my damn opinion. So <laughs> not, not the opinion of anyone else who saw it. But I thought he was great. He was having fun. The rhino is not supposed to be some deep intellectual character. He's a guy in a rhino suit. And I thought that was great. Um, I will probably see that awful looking San Andreas shit because he's in it. Um, and also The Rock. I like The Rock. Um, what else has he done? He was in that, that really shitty Romeo and Juliet, re again, Romeo and Juliet movies. Uh, he was the friar in that Romeo and Juliet movie on Netflix. It was shit. But he was good. <laughs> he actually he he's just he's able to save portions of movies for me. Um, I'm trying to think of another one. I'm sure there are a few more, but he's the first one who like jumped in my head. Shoot so. him up. He was great in shoot him up. Of course, that movie no, gets over top all the way. And, and that's okay. And, and then there's also it's like when he's in a great movie, like oh god, what was the the one he's like a the psychiatrist one. Um, I don't remember the name of it, but no. yes, yes, yep. That Pulled that one. Pulled that one out of nowhere. Right out of nowhere. I'm always blown away by your movie trivia knowledge. Me? Yeah. I don't know where it comes from. I really don't. It's I a, don't either. It's <laughs> probably your huge there, collection of movies. It's there when you need it. 
All right. Uh, it's there when you need it, and that's what matters. LB, what are yours? Well, I go refill real quick, and I will try to get back as soon as possible because I do want to hear what you say. So go what? real slow. Like. Well. <laughs> Gosh, I don't even know if I could pick a Trump. That's a really tough question. Uh, yeah, see, you being the film connoisseur that you are. I'm, that's not me trying to be a dick. That's like you actually kind of judge movies on an intellectual level. At least yeah, if I, I used correctly. to. <laughs> yeah, so I guess it's been a little while since I've had a strong movie conversation with you. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what I studied in college, but I, I don't know. I don't do it anymore. I, I read Gurgitate press releases now. <laughs> uh, uh, man. <laughs> um, so... Hey, Bill, welcome back. What did I miss? Uh, nothing. I managed to stall this entire time talking about other things. I doubt yeah. that. I helped a little bit, man. No, I think, I mean, a trump card obviously is someone where if I see that person's in the movie, I think, <clears throat> I don't care how terrible the movie is, I'm going to watch it. And it, just because that person's in it and I enjoy their work and usually they're good at what they do, that said, I don't know if I can honestly name any <laughs> Trump cards. One that's kind of like, not, I mean, Tom Hanks. Okay. I mean, get, you can't not the like Tom Hanks. There. You can't not like anything he's done, 80s stuff, 90s stuff, now, it don't matter. I watch it because he's, I mean, he yeah, does good I'm, stuff. Yeah. Even his shitty movies can. are pretty good. Yeah, I don't even know of any really shitty movies that he's been in. I well, mean, there's some, been some lesser ones. You've got I, mail. Sleepless in mail. Seattle's pretty uh, rough. The you've remake got mail might be the most you've got mail. The remake of... Well, You've Got Mail is the remake of Shop Around the Corner. But I absolutely <laughs> agree with you. I think Tom Hanks has not ever failed me. Like, right. If I, I, mean, if I had to make a list of like the top actors of anything... like. If, just ones that never let me down. Tom Hanks is definitely in my top one or two. I mean, the man carries a two-plus-hour film by himself in a beach ball. Mm -hmm. That says something Wilson. about acting. Wilson uh -huh. had some serious gumption, man. Yeah. To go up against Tom Hanks like that? I... Yeah. That volleyball got nominated for Best Supporting Actor, right? I don't remember <laughs> if it did. <laughs> if, we, if we were doing the Shit. recap show, we would have put him. <laughs> yeah, we would have. Uh, Chris, you got anything more to add on this before we get into mine? Uh, I'm being a good host. No, I mean, I feel, uh, what was, I, I was actually thinking a little bit about what LB said about how, or I might be twisting this up between people, but how a trump card is more so just something that you consider that you would be willing to spend money on just because they're in the movie. That is not at all how I feel about Johnny Linguizamo. Like, I usually find out later that he was in a movie, and then all of a sudden like the movie more. <laughs> like, so, like, I mean, and I agree. Your assessment of what a trump card would be, like, especially in the American standard of things, uh, it absolutely should be something that would make you go, you know, see the movie just because they're in it. And I don't know, if, if I took that into account, I don't know if there's a single actor out there right now that I, oh, okay. This is the most depressing trump card for me, and it's because I want to hate this guy. Um, but every time, besides one movie, he's impressed me. I, I'm just waiting to see fa no no facial expressions that make him seem... Leonardo DiCaprio. Mm. Mm. I saw him in Titanic, and I hate him. So, but I will watch almost any movie that he's in now, you know, 15 years after Titanic. Uh, I guess I don't remember when Titanic came out, so that's a rough guess. Um, well, I mean, 97. 97, was it 97? Yeah, 97. 97. Okay. 97? 97? Okay. So, 18 years. That makes me feel old, guys. Come on. Yeah. Uh, but okay. he... Titanic? Titanic. I, I hate Titanic? that movie. Titanic? Kate hate Winslet's that Titanic. Titanic. Oh, yeah. Titanic. I like it. <laughs> hey, Billy uh, Zane's in that movie. You leave him alone. No, I'll give you that, though, Chris. I think Leonardo DiCaprio has definitely come a long way since Titanic, and 
I enjoy all his work he does now. Like, I mean, even, like, the ones that a lot of people didn't see, like, Blood Diamond, and, mm-hmm. like, uh, like, honestly, I'm impressed by everything that man does. And I, like, I always have a reservation about it until I'm like, wait a second, pull Titanic out of the mix, he really is a legit trump card. Uh, at least in my mind, he, if, if we're gonna go by those stand, like the standards that LB set for trump cards, I will pay to see a movie with Leonardo DiCaprio in it, as long as it's not like. Oh, actually, honestly, I don't think he does movies that are just like love stories or anything like that anymore. So, I probably he would be one of the very few that I would just go out of my way to do it for, and I try so hard like i just have such a huge mental block and i want to hate that guy as an actor because of titanic but he really has proven me wrong every movie after especially in gangs of new york who has uh-huh. a really 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 good person in it that i would probably pay to see in most movies and should have been the follow-up joker yeah. i tried to get somebody to bite on that not doing it not gonna do it it's, it's a good it's a good call not gonna do it um <laughs> Uh, do it. For me, you brought Chris brought this up like a while. Miller brought this up a while ago when we were talking, because he he remembered I said something along the lines of, uh, "For me to like an actor, they have to have three good movies," which is uh, their their holy trilogy, as I call it. And um, for example, I have to like Tom Cruise now because of Legend, The Last Samurai, and uh, at the time it was um, Tropic Thunder, but now it's uh, Edge of Tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Okay. I always forget about Tropic Thunder. He's killer in that target. And, you know, part of me now starts to hate Robert Downey Jr. because he's playing the same part over and over and over again, but I still have to give it to him uh-huh. for Iron Man, um, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, and Tropic Thunder. All right? So there's there's always three movies, but that doesn't necessarily mean a trump card. And, you know, if I really had to think about it, there has to be what LB said, someone that makes me go out of my way. And to mine, there are two people that are still on the trump card list. Kurt Russell... And Bruce Campbell. Fun Whoa. fact: Bill Henning was hey, in a Kurt Russell movie. I was in a Kurt Russell movie. <laughs> okay. Wow. Because Kurt Russell gets mad props for me for all the John Carpenter films, all of them. The Thing, easily one of my favorite and best horror films to date. Uh, Big Trouble in Little China is a huge thing amongst my family. It's right up there with uh, The Princess just, Bride as the most quotable movie in my family of all time are those two films. Um, and, you know, the Escape movies. The, the total badass. So, Kurt Russell and then Bruce Campbell. I, I love that man. He can't do anything wrong. I mean, I watched Alien Apocalypse in my dorm room my freshman year going, this is an Alien Apocalypse. The movie even Bruce Campbell hates. Oh my god. And then I went out and bought it because it's Bruce (laughs) Campbell. I remember watching um, I went to go see him live and he he, uh, had like tickets to see Man with the Screaming Brain. Movie's terrible. But I loved it because Bruce Campbell was in it. You know, Mm. I watched um, what is it? My Name is Bruce with our friends in one of our apartments and that's when I realized they're not real Bruce Campbell friends because everyone was like that movie was terrible like, that movie was great <laughs> and that's why I love Sky High because they're both in that movie <laughs> Bill's okay. favorite movie Sky High <laughs> it's hard to deny Kurt Russell beats up the scenery as much as Bruce Campbell okay and that's pretty hard that's pretty hard to do so yeah I, f- I feel it for Bruce uh I don't know if I'm on the exact same page for Kurt, but I like I I absolutely appreciate why you feel that way about him. Well, it's also because all I of his f- stuff's entertaining, especially for for what those movies were when they came out, for sure. Yeah, it, and I still like watching a lot of those anyway. I, I heard somewhere Kurt Russell did an interview that says I don't do movies that are gonna be big blockbusters. I do movies because I like the script and I want to have fun. And I'm like, I respect that so much. So when he shows up in a movie, I'm like, it's Kurt Russell. He's having mm-hmm. fun. I want to go see him. enjoy this. So th- that, that's, that's my list. It's real sweet and short and sweet. It used to be longer, but then people abused it, which leads us to our, our follow-up topic. Is there a way to get off the Trump list? Is, or is there an anti that just because this person's in the movie, you won't go see it? There is definitely now, one. 
I'm going to really lead. Nice. I'm going to lead on this just because okay. this is my topic. No, just because it's my topic. Okay. And I'm going to put it down there. For the longest time, these two people were on my Trump list, but then they abused it. Which is how you get off my Trump list. And it makes me really, really sad because it's Sam Jackson and Christopher Walken. Just after a while, they started showing up in more and more and more and more and more stuff. And it wasn't as fun to see them. And they weren't that much of a draw anymore just because they oversaturated the market. Is that the correct terminology I'm using? Sure. Okay. Yeah, I think so. I see what you mean by it. Yeah, I mean, sure. it's I, I still love Sam Jackson. I still love Christopher Walken. I can still do the voice. It just... After a while, they just started doing so much stuff that I was just like, no, I can't. I can't do it anymore. You're not even saving it. You're just, I mean, have you seen the trailer for Joe Dirt 2? Christopher Walken looks terrible. Okay. Sorry. Throw so that's that's what brought me up into that is the idea that, you know, it's, it's not good. It's not good. So reverse order. Chris Miller. Um. I mean, I don't know if I have somebody who's just, like, started to fail me, but you actually put in a really good point about Samuel L. Jackson. And I hate that I just said that because I love me some Sammy J. And, but the thing is, like, the cliche of Sammy J for a lot of years has been the exact same thing, and I don't get as excited about it anymore. I don't know if I would pull it completely into an anti-Trump on that front. But I 100% empathize with you on saying that. Yeah, I'm not I'm not saying Christopher Walken and Sammy J are anti-Trumps. They have just been removed from their Trump card status oh, for me. Okay. Okay. I I, can, I, I, don't, I would say the same thing on that. I don't know if there's somebody I truly hate off the top of my head because I'm probably blocking them out of my memory. Oh, I got one. Oh, yeah, Johnny, John, my wife just brought up a great one. Johnny Depp has been removed from Trump card status because of oversaturation. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Um, okay Helen Barma one. Carter, too. That's the one, too. Th- this is usually a package that, of deal. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Tim Burton. Yeah, actually, anymore. Yeah, you're right. I mean, I guess anymore. Who am I kidding? It's been, like, the last decade. Yeah. Um, but uh, this one... The, people either love or hate this guy, and this guy is an anti-Trump for me. I will just almost never pay to see a movie that this guy's in. Okay, you guys ready? Yeah. Nicolas Cage. Oh, Nick Cage is... There's just something yeah. about Nicolas Cage that just makes me hate the concept of the movie. Like, I used to... I, I read a majority of the Ghost Rider comics. He was... In Ghost Rider, I refused to watch that movie. <laughs> Uh, two. I can run to go see it. I can run yeah. to go grab it. I, have uh, it. I, I believe it. Uh, Jim I, I, no. I think I eventually saw it, and I think it was at the Brick House at yeah. one point, just because I think you made me watch it. I'm sorry. Uh, I could be wrong. It's terrible. It doesn't matter. It's not hard. good. Yeah, no, it's terrible. But And that's the thing. Uh, there's one movie that I think you was oh. in that was kind of redeeming. And when I say redeemy, I mean it's just the one that didn't piss me off because it was so terrible on all fronts that I kind of enjoyed it. And uh, it also spawned one of my favorite quotes to say to people inappropriately, which is, uh, hate to see you go, love to watch you leave. Anybody? You got to know this, Bill. No, there's too many that comes to mind for for going through his list. Face off. Face (laughs) off. Listen, you got to give Nicolas Cage a bye because he has a bomb implanted in his chest, and if he doesn't do three movies a year, it will explode. I have to assume yep. that that's correct because that's the only fucking excuse. Yep, his I mean, agent I, calls him and he's just like, all right, I'll do it. The, I don't care what it is, I'll do it. There's a point. Speed 17, let's go. There's a point in Christopher Walken, not Christopher Walken, uh, Nick Cage's uh, history that you have to appreciate. Face off, you got to love it because face off. There's, Con Air, put yep, the bunny down. Con Air was going to be the one exception that I was going to put. I The Rock? See, I don't know if I can give him the credit for The Rock. Okay. Oh, I guess, I, guess we put, yeah, I guess is, we put Sean Connery on my actual Trump list, too. Please, thank you. Okay, bye. I own League yeah. of Extraordinary Gentlemen because he's in it. It's, yeah, I'd say that's... I like that movie. I, I'm. It's terrible, but I like it. 
I, I understand your sentiment toward it. That's kind of where I'm at. Like, I will watch that movie if it's a, available to watch, but I don't think it's a good quality movie. <laughs> so, no, I, I can 100% agree, Nick Cage, being on your hate list. But I sympathize. They put a bomb in his chest, man. Come on now. Uh, but Con Air is the exception. That's, that, that is, I don't know what put it is about Con Air. Down. There, there are a lot of, like, really good actors in that show. But I don't think it makes up for the plot or Nick Cage. But I still will watch Con Air, but, and, and I, I think Nicholas Cage actually did a pretty good job in Con Air, which blows my mind. Uh, just because I don't think he's done good in okay Matchstick Men. He's actually pretty good in Matchstick Men but too. That, that's the thing like, with Nicholas Cage; it really throws you off. He like does crap movie, crap movie, crap movie, and then he does like a bad lieutenant that's critically acclaimed. You know. Yeah, no. Here's the thing about Nick Cage is that he just, like he doesn't know how to turn movies down. He just does any movie that they pay him to almost Bomb if they're willing the to pay his salary. Bomb in the chest. Exactly. And that's that actually leads me to my anti one of my anti Trumps, someone who's become an anti Trump or no longer Trump anyway, is Liam Neeson. Oh no, not Liam Neeson. I used really? to love him. You know, he's in a movie like Oh man, oh, you know, know Star what? Wars and what? Take I, one. Yeah. I get that because now Hollywood's decided he's an action star. <laughs> Which is fine. Yeah, but I wish he wasn't. You know, Man with a gun. Every movie. It's like, what I don't. What are you doing? You, you know, the funny thing is Taken, which started it all, I don't really classify as like a hard action movie. It was more of a drama. It was a know? drama suspense with a hint of action. Yeah, but yeah. like Taken 2, Taken 3 is trying to push it in that Or Or Taken action. in the Air. What was that take, called? Take, 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 non-stop. non-stop. <laughs> take, taken in the Air. Is that like taking the spinoff? <laughs> <laughs> or, or what is it? That sounds like taken on a plane. Night is what I said. Take, taken versus wolves. You know, I don't know who you are, but I will find you and I will kill you. A woo! Was that one the gray? I don't know. It's, yeah. it's, it's literally spin the wheel. It's taken the blank. Oh man! Hollywood, so, yeah. call me up. I got, I got twelve taken movies ready for you. But my real anti-Trump, Dumb. someone who is in movies that I won't watch because he's in them, and I've said this before, and Bill can probably name it without me saying it. No, I can't. Oh, Channing Tatum. Oh, Channing Tatum, man. Oh, you don't I like yeah. Channing Tatum. I hate him. I I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. magic, man. But before, before we get to Birch, I want to say this. I remember a time where LB thought one of my anti-Trump cards was Heath Ledger. And he came in one day when I was on, on one of our apartments. It was I was watching The Brothers Grimm. And he's like, what are you watching? I'm like, The Brothers Grimm. And he goes, why? I thought you hate Heath Ledger. I'm like, I don't hate Heath Ledger, damn it! <laughs> I just think the Joker was overrated. I, just, I, I thought it was... That o- was I, I'm assuming that's, that's what you That's thought. exactly what it is. I'm not <laughs> saying it wasn't a great acting. I just think people blew it out of proportion. Okay? But Bill, speaking of terrible movies... On, on that note, listen, Daniel listen. Day-Lewis should have been the next Joker. Yes, I he just bit been. on my own hook. Uh, <laughs> that was like a half hour late, but I just bit on it. Uh, deal with it. The uh, Brothers Grimm is a fantastic film because it is the three amigos only with fantasy creatures. And therefore, I love it and I own it. Deal with it. Do you want me to get into to the reason I, I don't like uh, Channing Tatum? Sure, go ahead. Because he is first and foremost the, the male model. I mean, it's how he got to start. Magic Mike's the story of how he got to start, right? So I mean, sexist. So, you think he so was honest? He should be in Zoolander 2 as a male model? <gasps> yeah, my point is, my point is, yeah. you think he got cast in G.I. Joe for his acting ability? Well, no one did. Listen, <laughs> listen, yeah, like, Chris, oh, okay, Chris Miller and I saw G.I. Joe together, and we both said at the end of the film, I was all right for a, based off of a toy line. I think, I think, I think you said it, the, it, it falls under the line of, after watching Dragon Ball Evolution, I didn't oh. hate it. <laughs> Channing Tatum in that movie has the line delivery of of Sylvester Stallone as Rambo with the acting talent of a mop. <laughs> oh, you made me re- you reminded me of a Trump card, Amanda Sante. Amanda Sante. How did I remind you of Amanda Sante? Amanda Sante is Amanda Sante. You can't not know. Who I know Amanda him Sante. from two things, Bill. What two? Um, The Odyssey. Yes. <laughs> and Judge Dredd. <laughs> That's exactly how I got there. Because, because, uh, the law. <laughs> okay. 
Amanda Sante makes everything better. <laughs> he made NCIS better for being a villain for a season. Called The Frog. I kid you not. Amanda Sante. Birch. Who's your anti <laughs> All right. Amanda um, Sante. Let me start Amanda. by saying... Amanda Sante. <laughs> the law. <laughs> let me start by saying that every rule has an exception. And this one does too. So not... I have two anti-Trumps that typically, unless I have reason to believe that I will enjoy the movie for other reasons, I will not go see if these people are in it. I fucking hate Keanu Reeves. And I know what Bill's about to tell me. No, I'm, I, will yep. t- I will tell you later, <laughs> you will watch John Wick and love it. That's Billy exactly Jack. what I hear you're going to tell me. Um, and that's the exception. From that's what the I exception. hear, I don't like Bill and Ted either. I, it, I see no appeal to that movie. Um, what about The Matrix? But... I've never seen The Matrix. Uh, seen it's something... Either. No, I haven't. There's, o- there's only one I... Matrix film. There's only one Matrix film. There's only three okay, Indiana Jones films. The Animatrix? I'll, be... oh. I'll rent that later. Um, but yeah, in general, I know the whole... I mean, it's kind of a cliche almost how awful he is, but unless he find, If he finds his niche, which I guess he does in like John Wick and The Matrix, cool, run with it. But in general, I, I just don't want to watch his ass do anything. Um, and the other one is Michael Sarah. Uh, I really hate yeah. Michael Sarah. I really hate Michael Sarah. Uh, and again, the exception for me is is uh, Scott Pilgrim. Yeah, um, that's the one I was thinking of. Yeah. Yeah. It's and again because his his what he's got, what he has to offer really works in that movie. But I I would argue just about nothing else. I mean he. I know what he's going for, awkward kid, but it gets old after the first scene. <laughs> and no, yeah, it's true. It's true. I just yeah. thought, what? I just saw the most brilliantly awful casting: Michael Sarah as Peter Parker. Oh, I would, I would, <laughs> I would. Make would a little bit, man. I would. I. I don't. I can't finish my sentence. I would. I would just something. I would. I would something. Can, can but we, it would not be a pleasant something. Listen, listen. I know how to. I know how to counteract it for Chris Miller. Ready? John Leguizamo plays J. Jonah Jameson. <laughs> I would oh. pay five dollars to see that movie. That's the price of a Ninja <laughs> Turtles movie. <laughs> I. That's I just enough to would, get it a sequel. I hope That's you just enough to get it a sequel. Be. But I would probably watch. It. I would watch. What, what, what is it? Donald Glover's uh, joke about Michael Sarah playing Shaft. I would watch the shit out of that film. I would go broke twice. <laughs> Shaft, what are we doing today? Uh, I don't know. You go look it up. It's better. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, any other things that pop into mind about Trumps and anti-Trumps? Because I remembered an anti-Trump for me. Uh, Megan Fox, she's terrible. Uh, but so many, I want to pretend they were adolescent erections. Yeah, but I'm, you know, here's I'm the thing. I'm too old to say that they were adolescent. No, I'm, I'm going to say this right now. I'm, I'm but a, then that's well, the same kind of thing as the whole male model thing. Like, the, it's the reason that Channing Tatum is, is old for LB, right? Yeah. And the whole, oh, they look good. But, LB doesn't like erections, though. Um, I'm just gonna say uh, this. I'm a, I, I think she loses her um, attractiveness every time she does a film. Like over the years, she's become like plastic it up that I don't. I'll like be honest. It. The only one that I remember her in is Transformers, and then whatever movie she did right after that, where she was in her underwear climbing around outside of a room. I don't know, like, like outside of a building. Jennifer's she, body or something. She did, Maybe she I only did saw that part last summer. Uh, uh, I I haven't I don't go out of my way to see her, uh, but I liked that Transformers scene. I'm not gonna lie. Um, but no, she's not a good actress. Yes, you know what? The I'm I'm a little shocked Shia LaBeouf didn't make your list. I think that Just man's brilliant. That man is yep. an inspirational speaker. I love that man. I listen to that. I listen to that video every morning. I don't believe you at all. I, I haven't nope, listened all. to the whole thing through. I kind of want to. Just Probably because it's a good 20 to 30 minutes long. Oh. So like, you, you, want, you want to know something, Bill? It's so intense and almost angry about it. it like, you, I kind of, I don't know. I like the energy at least. I haven't seen the whole thing, though. Here's a fact, and it's kind of a sad fact. But next to Peter Colin coming back as Optimus Prime, 
Shia LaBeouf is the best part of the Transformers movies. What about what about uh, Hugo Weaving? I don't really care for Hugo okay. Weaving. Um, just a guy. Here's somebody who should be on all of our trump cards, uh, Nathan Fillion. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just don't see him in enough things is the problem. Yeah, that's that's I mean, the thing. If, when if, I hear he's he in something, more... I latch on. Uh, yeah, if he, if he did more things, I'd be all over those things. Okay. But... On that same note, like almost the exact same note, uh, I really like watching anything that I've seen Felicia Day in. Yeah. Because like she's in a few episodes of Supernatural, and that show is, after the fifth season, fan fiction gone wild. But... Um... <laughs> She was in the last two, last episode of season one and season two of Dollhouse, and she was great in it. She's, you know, she she's one of those people that just doesn't get the credit I think she deserves. Plus, she's a foxy redhead. But it, it's, I want to. If I ever met her, I would apologize to her because I have this weird thing where if I find somebody I like and find out they were in something else beforehand, I'm like, I'm so sorry I didn't know about this prior. So for Chris Miller and I, it was, oh, she's that foxy redhead from. Uh, Dr. Horrible's sing-along vlog. And then we found out about the guild, and then I watched all of the guild, and I loved the guild, and I'd be like, I'm so sorry I didn't know about the guild before Dr. Horrible. Because it's this weird thing I have. Where I'm like, yeah. I'm so sorry I didn't know about this beforehand. Yeah, no. I th- she, she blows, like... I mean, then I... I, uh, I almost want to say Neil Patrick Harris. He's very close to a trump card, but I don't know if I can put him in there just because of the sheer amount of stuff he's done which has put him in a lot of odd situations that have not been the best and a lot of his characters have been beat to death so hard that the allure that he actually brings to them sometimes starts to die like a prime example and I mean it took a lot of seasons but Barney from How I Met Your Mother was one of the coolest characters on TV for six seasons Six? And then, what happened in season six? It, it wasn't anything in particular. Honestly, <laughs> I stopped watching it mostly after season five, but that's a whole... Which one was season, season five? Uh, season five was up to... Was that when Ted almost got married? Ted did get married. Oh, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Uh, <laughs> when, when, uh, Ted when, did when, get married. When did he get married? And then he got... Well, he almost got married. He was yeah, very, very to, close to, to it. Sarah, so it was at the altar when he got left. To, yeah, that 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 point right now. That's what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, that right? point after that season, it all went downhill for me. Uh, I kind of agree, uh, but then like anyway, when no. when when Neil got back together. Yep. Oh, I probably shouldn't keep. Oh no no no! It's fine. It's fine. Um, that show's but, terrible. I'll yeah. watch it. Well, oh, someday. <laughs> it's. It's worth this. Like, I mean, I I binge watched it for five oh, seasons. That's and what it was I did totally too. Worth it. And then I caught up. And then one, it was the same thing that happened to me and the show Lost. Yes. I binge watched it until I caught up with it multiple multiple seasons in, and I never saw it. By the way, I still have no idea what happened in Lost, so please don't tell me, because uh, some year I might actually watch it. But nobody has ever spoiled that for me, and I don't understand how. It's unspoilable because nobody knows what the fuck's going on. I do. Even if you know what it is, you don't know what it is. I never I mean, watched like, the show, but I know. It, it, I dropped and my it, wedding ring. It, like, oh, Shiza. Down the vent. Uh, but it worse under the cat. <laughs> yeah, when when I went to New Zealand back in 2009, I stopped watching Lost, but I used to watch it like I watched three seasons and skipped my first week of classes one year. Uh and then I caught up over the next few days like up to whatever season that was on. And then when I went to New Zealand, I never watched another season. And I never watched another episode because they were 6 months behind there. Yeah. And so I just, like, when I got back, I was like, yeah, I don't even care. And then it was over, and no one ever spoiled it for me, and it's been a decade. Um, Almost. It's not been a decade. It's been close. But Okay, so I guess we're done with these. As <laughs> well, LB sends me a message saying, we done fucked up. No, Bert sends me one saying, we done fucked up. Yeah. What do we do? <laughs> we just went. Uh, we went. No, I think we got derailed. I, we got derailed we, hard. Yeah, I think our train got a little derailed here. I don't know even how we're, we got. Here. We're like the train in Fugitive. We're derailed. All right. Tommy yeah. Lee Jones is sending out a search warrant for us right now. Okay. Yeah. And he doesn't care if we killed our wives. 
That, oh, <laughs> hey, that's another Trump, by the way. It's Tommy Lee Jones. Tommy Lee Jones? Okay, okay. I, the, reason, the reason why I think Neil, um, Nathan Fillion puts it on my list is because I started watching Castle because of him. And that's why I started watching – that's why I watched um, Dr. Horrible, actually. It was because Nathan Fillion's in it. That's the same reason why Bruce Campbell's on there because I started watching Burn Notice because – Bruce Campbell's in a TV show. Hell yeah, I'm going to watch that. So, with that, we're done. Um, let's talk about nerdy, learning YouTube videos. Chris Miller, that's your topic. Oh, man. Okay, so I feel like now that I've drank enough that this topic does not hold up to the same standards, uh, especially if other people don't watch as many ridiculous YouTube videos as I do. Um, however, one of the things that, had, like, I mean, I guess more on the physics-y, smarty, learny, YouTube videos that I've just fallen in love with is uh, a guy named, well, I mean, he it's uh, the Veritasium YouTube channel, All right. uh, and he does something that just makes me interested in everything that he does, and he's been working a lot together with, like, the people from, I, mean, I guess I'm just going to shout out a bunch of random YouTube Just, just go ahead. We'll send him a bill. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, so... <laughs> uh, but like Minute Physics, uh, Smarter Every Day, and there's a few others that he, oh, Vsauce, um, that he all collaborates with. But he does something that a majority of the other people don't, which really gets the attention going and makes it like interesting to learn some of the stuff that he wants to say. Even if like uh, you're somebody who like studies science on their side, kind of like I do, because I'm that kind of nerd. Uh, but he always starts with the misconceptions about what people think are true and it's a really interesting sidestep from a majority of the other like channels that try to like show you silly little things and just say hey here's something that's really cool and then it's just something that's really cool uh, i think vsauce does a pretty good job too i really love both of those two like if i was going to say that there's two youtube channels that if you just kind of want to like in your downtime just have something that kind of makes you either learn something or get another perspective on something those two are some of the better youtube channels out there that are actually like kind of positive not just entertainment influence youtube channels anyway again i feel like it's a little bit off topic for what we were going at but it was well something that was really interesting to me that has really caught my attention over the last like year and a half well, okay, let's let's open that up into, to Birch and LB because I have a couple. Is there any, like, I mean, this is always something I want to ask my friends is, like, what's your cross-section of subscriptions to YouTube? What, do you have any of these? Do you have any, like, little nuggets of joy you want to share to the world? I'm I, opening YouTube so I can add them. Birch? Yeah. Um, most of what I watch on YouTube has is uh, either movie reviews or, like, guys who just kind of chat about whatever, like, tell stories. Um, and two of those really great ones are... Like us? Yeah, I know, right? It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's like us. Um, but you haven't one subscribed of those to us, Swoozy. asshole. It, I, I haven't? No. Oh, I guess because I, 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 ba- I rarely use YouTube. But when I do, I should do things like subscribe, subscribe to our own damn channel. Which um, you should also <laughs> like, subscribe, like, comment, subscribe to this video and tell us what uh, YouTube videos you like. See yeah, what, see what I did there? everybody else. Um, Swoozy. Does anybody know Swoozy? Anybody? Well, I feel like I've heard no? Swoozy. I've heard of it, but I don't know. He he is very funny, and he's also very real. Like, he has, he talks about, he's, his biggest things was he would he told, like, secrets of being a Disney Parks employee. Oh, okay. And yeah, yeah, he has these fun little animations, and it's just him narrating. Yeah, and he, um... And he does all these stories about things like, hey, you ever experienced this? And it's something that, like, everybody's experienced. And he tells the stories about it. And he's just, he's very funny. He's very down to earth. And he's just kind of fun to listen to. Um, so, he, and, yeah, I, I, I recommend him. I'd also recommend uh, Jeremy Johns. You know him, anybody? He, is, uh, he does movie reviews. Is he the guy who did the... Um how to make Phantom Menace better and Attack of the Clones better? I don't think that was him, um, but he did do. Re- he recently went back and reviewed all the prequels. Okay, I don't because know because they were. Yeah, I don't know who did it, but he had this really good plot that was actually really really good. 
I, I thought that was him because it, it had his name in the. I'm I think you told you told me about this, and I, I meant to look that one up, and I'm probably gonna do that soon. But yeah, Jeremy. No, no, no. Uh, Jeremy Johns. He has he has these really great reviews, and he's uh, again he's he's just one of those personalities that is fun to watch and fun to listen to. So yeah, he's he's one of my recommendations. And then John Tron, obviously. John yeah. Tron. Uh, LB, what's your cross section of YouTube? Uh, honestly, I don't watch YouTube uh, pretty much at all because I spend all day at work watching and videos in uh, various formats and redistributing them in my newscast. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, when I I just don't watch YouTube. I, I get enough of video content at work. Uh, I peruse YouTube for what is the latest viral video. That's pretty much it. Um, but when I do watch it from time to time, I like to watch Tabletop. Tabletop's a great show. The Will Wheaton <clears throat> program on the Geek and Sundry channel, I believe, which I've, is... I've bought uh, about three board games because of him now. Yes, I have amassed a quite the board game collection. Not many of them are because I watched a show. I said, that looks interesting. Let me watch this. That does look fun. I'm going to buy it. I yep. mean, that's just, yeah. It's a great so. show. Great show. Um, for me, weeding out all of, like the Northern Lion video game stuff or Ponce or Bro Fresca and League of Legends and Skin Spotlights for that, um, you come down to things like um, uh, the CinemaSins guys for Everything Wrong With. Which that's a, uh, that's a really good one. It's, that's a good one. And then they, mm -hmm. uh, they picked up a guy called Couch Tomato. And you should really check him out. He's very small stuff, but it's called... He does a series of videos called 24 Reasons Why Blank is Like Blank. And one of them was like, why Iron Man is the same film as Michael Bay's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Or why the Avengers and Masters of the Universe starring Dolph Lundgren and Frank Langella are the same film. And it's a little cherry-picking, but it's fun. Um, okay. But for more leaning towards what this topic started as... Um, you got to look up Matt Pat, uh, but I think you could just look up uh, Game Theory, and he okay. does he does um, these great theories on all kinds of video games. Uh, like one of them was why do uh, the Star Fox characters have metal legs? That's a great episode. That's I've a great seen episode. That one. Yep, I showed that one to you, Birch. Um, it blew my mind. Yeah, that one's really good. He has like a bunch of bat bat catalogs of is evolution really evolution in Pokemon. Um, and then he has like a lot, a lot of silly ones like um, boob sizes for just funsies. Um, uh, he has this great arc of the real story behind Five Nights at Freddy, which is just a great that story. So it's it, like I don't care if he made it up and just fabricating shit. It doesn't change the fact that that is an amazing story. Um, he has one like how fast Sonic really goes if you really want to break yeah. down the math. Uh, I found out he has another channel called... Um, Film theory. Oh yeah, he. It's pretty. It's worth a check out. Uh, there's only like nine or so videos. It's kind of good. He talks to. He had one why. Uh, uh, what is it? Fifty Shades of Grey. The guy Grey in that film. I don't know. There's a, <laughs> is actually making a cult around BDSM and like because it hits like the eight steps of becoming a cult. It's great. It's fantastic because you kind of go hmm. Um, on the other side, uh, Good Mythical Morning. I was going to throw that one in which, there I forgot about it. When I had, when I saw Good Mythical Morning, the first thing that popped in my head was a little nugget of, of history from two, two of the, three of the members here, not Birch. Um, there's a, a YouTube show we made long ago that uh, LB was a part of and Chris Miller was a part of called Bill and AP. Don't look it up. Don't do it. But there's a there's a plot Just line. Want to see me in a Pikachu outfit <laughs> and there's, possibly see my nuts in one shot? I was all up in those nuts. There, there's a part. <laughs> there's a part where uh, in in the show, LB's characters quits, and uh, uh, my character and AP's character from Two Headed Giants. Check them out, please. Um, can't put on the show without him so we try to convince him to come back we write a song it's shitty and we find out that lb is making a new show with chris and isaac banish from our gamma world game that's on our youtube channel called chris and no it's chris and ib and honestly 
Good Mythical Morning reminds me of the Chris and I B show to a T. Like, to an absolute T that even Isaac looks like Rhett from Rhett and Linked. It's just, it hurts my brain. And I love it. Oh, when you, yeah, no, when you say that, I was like, I might be Rhett just because I don't talk you, as much and I say stupider things. But yeah, no, he looks exactly like Rhett. Well, look, if you if you and Isaac fusion Hod, you'd have Rhett. Yeah. Perfectly, to a T. Okay, and then if LB and AP fusion Hod, you'd have Link. With some glasses. With some glasses, but, you know, they, they wear glasses and put contacts in. But Oh, yeah, fair enough. I love Good Mythical Morning. I watch him every day. Um, I do, too. I watch Trump. Not that Trump, but Trump from uh, who does Hearthstone videos. Oh, okay. He he breaks down math pretty well in, in a lot of theory. No, because he, 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 if you want to learn how to play Hearthstone right, watch Trump. Because he breaks down stuff down... But those are nerdy stuff. Um, they plague my subscription a lot. What else is on my subscription? Let's look. Hmm? I, Go ahead. Can I throw in a random one? Yeah. And this is this is not as nerdy and learn. I mean, it is nerdy and it is kind of learning, but it's not the same kind as I was originally going on at all. Uh, it's one that I just recently found like less than a month ago, but I've watched like almost all of his videos. Uh, and I don't know why it's so amusing, besides the fact that he just loves what he does so much. Uh, but it's George Sprave. Uh, it's J O E R G S P R A V E. Okay. Also known as the Slingshot Channel. Okay. He makes random weapon type things in the oh, Slingshots. Yeah. And he's, like, this happy-go-lucky, weird German dude that, like, shows you all of his plans on how he makes, like, everything. and like Or he links it to him in his own website and everything. But there's just something about him that makes me really want to start making slingshots. <laughs> and, like, I don't know. Like, he's just... I don't know. He, It's just one of those things where it's, like, I started watching it and I'm like, that's awesome. I like that this guy loves what he does so much. And I feel like I'm kind of learning how to make random small weapons. But still. Um, anyway, sorry. That just popped into my head. Other on my list are like the big ones, like Total Biscuit, if you want to know more about uh, computer games. Um, that one video gamer for The Completionist with Gerard, who just br really breaks down video games because he 100% completes any game he reviews. Um, Angry Joe Show for great reviews. And uh, Jim Sterling, if you haven't checked out Jim Sterling, please check out Jim Sterling. He's fantastic. Uh, he he had he has his own channel now, but he was a part of The Escapist, and he had a great show called Movie Defense Force, where he would take movies that were considered bad and then defend them and make you like them. Perfect case in point is that he he I, if anybody can like argues with me like Alien Three was a bad movie, I show them this video because he does an Alien Three Movie Defense Force. And it was great. Um, yeah. Uh, and then the other one I haven't subscribed to yet, but I might as well, is Watch Mojo. They do top tens every day for a decent top ten on just about anything you could think of. Like, just throw a dart at a wall of everything, and they probably did a, a top ten about 99% of that stuff. So that's my uh, that's my YouTube cut list. But for this nerdy, learny, it's game theory, game theory, movie theory, and Good Mythical Morning. Mm -hmm. Plus some other random shit that I eat up every now and then. Like, I watched some video about guys making, um, not the Dragon Slayer, but Guts' sword before he got the Dragon Slayer in Berserk. Like, the full nine-foot blade. And they're like, yeah, and you can cut wood with it. If you can pick up 250 pounds... It's fantastic. Speaking of intense animes, people should watch. Berserk. Or read. Uh, yeah, read it because it blows your fucking mind. It's a, I love that. I love that series. Um, okay, so we have two topics left. Uh, Birch, what one do you want to do? Or LB, haven't you picked yet? I think um, Birch's turn. Birch, you pick. I I say let's do this uh, Jurassic World thing. And let's get out of the way. Okay, so yeah. this isn't focusing on Jurassic World, but this came out I think earlier this week that uh, I believe he was a comedian or a rapper, I don't know which, um, UK resident uh, man from Pakistan, um, 
had this huge rant about they want people to boycott Jurassic World because they use the term Paki, which is a derogatory term in UK towards a Pakistani person. A person from Pakistan, not a Pakistani. That's not right. I'm trying to be sensitive here, damn it. And it's used in Jurassic World to, and we're ignoring the fact that it's not actually this dinosaur that it was misidentified in Jurassic Park 2 Lost World, the Pachysaurus. That's the one with the dome head. They hit each other. That's what the, it says. It's not really a Pachysaurus. It's something else, but who fucking cares? Okay. And they say a Pachy is out of containment. And apparently it's used six times in the movie and he's asking people to boycott it. Problem number one, too fucking late. The movie broke all kinds of records. Yeah. The movie broke all kinds of records. They're not going to go in and no. It's... No. No. Boycotting it will do nothing. At this point, the one of the one of the top comments on his video was something like, "Standard Americans not paying attention to uh, other people's cultures and you know using derogatory racist ter- racist terms," and I'm not saying it isn't a racist term, and you know we should be more sensitive and open about that stuff. My point is, uh, my question I was going to ask you guys, which we can open up to your thoughts on the feelings on this as well, is um, more on to a segue to this is, do you feel our society now is too soft skin on things? Like we're just, you know, too, we're too easily offended by everything? Or is it because of the internet? And is it an easier way for everybody to reach to each other and get to each other's um, uh, opinions and views and everything that we find more and more people latching onto these things that we didn't have beforehand. So, yes and yes. yes. And a part of it is, yeah, a part of it, this is outrage culture. We live in a society where it's fun and cool and easy to get really upset about everything. So we do. And I'm not saying that there's, I don't want to be like bandwagoning right now or anything or like up on my soapbox, but um, it, there's, there, there's a lot of... Um, situations that call for some real indignation and some real, you know, things to get upset about. And there's not. And I think this is, this sounds like a stretch to me. I hadn't heard about this until two nights, like a couple of hours ago. And it, I saw the movie. I didn't think a thing of it. Maybe it shows that I'm an ignorant person, but I, I don't know. I, I didn't read into white it. white American bastard. Yes. My privilege is showing. And, um... Yes, let's yeah. have let's have four white guys talk about race. Yeah, and we're, are, we're, are, we're, are you are you are you, are you, are you happy, Chris? I'm looking down at you right now on the screen. Are you happy that I brought up a political thing so you you don't feel completely shunned in this podcast? Oh man, yeah. Considering the recent things that I've been studying, I, I like where you're going. Okay, but anyway, I Perch, don't want to interrupt, Chris. No, that's that's pretty much my my thing. Is that um, it's easy to get upset. It's not as easy to think about it and then decide if it's best to get upset. And people like to take the easy way out. So, I don't know. Not to, Again, that's not to say that, you know, anytime you see somebody getting angry about that kind of thing, that it's not justified or warranted. I'm just saying it'd be cool if we just thought a little more about it before we exploded. That's all. So, that's my spiel. That, that, you know, honestly, that's, that's kind of what I was going to say. Because I, I bring up... Um, yeah in the Mad Max review of um, talking about how we're a culture that grabs onto things and forgets the past easily, mm-hmm. really, really fast about how everyone's saying Mad Max is a, you know, uh, finally a, a blockbuster that has strong female leads and it blows everything out of the water. And I'm just raising my hand going, I'm an alien fan. You know, Ellen Ripley's been kicking ass and taking names since 1979. You know, yeah. this, uh, Mad Max didn't do anything different than aliens did in 1986 really, in my mind. It, mm-hmm. it was a mediocre movie with a I, predominantly... I, I See, I thought it was okay as... well. I should have had you on the review, so we'd have yeah, a little... So a little here's, mm. here's my viewpoint on Mad Max. Just in, in a long... Sh- it, like, I'll give it the TLDR version. I like what they did with the fact that by far the most interesting characters were the females. Mm-hmm. Um, on on all fronts, and that's something that you don't see in movies. So I respect that they went that route. However, it really felt like that was the major selling point of it from an actual quality movie point of view. 
the rest of it was like post-apocalyptic Need for Speed. And don't get me wrong, Have that's kind of what film? Mad Max is as a whole. Yeah, and I, I, I see that that's what you were about to say there. I enjoyed watching the movie. Do I think it was a great movie? No. Do I think it's probably going to be the best movie of the summer? No. But do I like what they did with it? Uh, and the fact that it was a very predominantly male movie in the past... And then they made the most interesting characters female. Yeah, do I think that they did it as a shtick? No. I don't think that was the intention. No, that's, and, that's what I liked about it, that it wasn't and, and, intended to be that. You know, it and, and, evolved that way. And I think it evolved that way. And, and then the our society own... grabbed a hold of it and made it mm-hmm. that, which I don't yeah. like, which leads back to... I'm just this trying to I'm trying to draw topic. you back on a topic. I'm not trying to cut you off, man. We just oh, no, you're we've good. been sorry, all over I the place. Be cut off. I, I rant like a madman. So no, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but is this... Is, is this I'm not saying people shouldn't be outraged at using the term, you know. I, I don't know if I should even say it because it might be the equivalent of the the N-word to them. It could be. I'm, I'm not aware of that. I, 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 I don't know. That's what I'm saying is like, you know, you shorting the term Pachyosaurus to Pachy is apparently, you know, a, it's a hate word, you know. But at the same time, this is the best I could come up with, which is incredibly lame, and that shows a little bit of our privilege. Is I don't get upset every time somebody in a movie says, "Pass me the crackers." Okay. <laughs> I mean, okay, yes, and you know what? And that also brings me to but, another point, which is an intent is something that should be considered in that kind of thing. Yes, and that's the in, thing. In, intent. Mm-hmm. It, I mean, you can say, "Well, cracker isn't even that hard of a word," but it is a hate word. It doesn't change the, you know, it hasn't been around for 200 years. It's still a hate word that defines someone's race and therefore is a racist word. But, you know, what came first, the, the, the slur in the UK or naming the dinosaur a Pachyosaurus? Yeah, in, intent is what should be focused on in a situation like this. Uh, as far as, I mean, I agree with everything that Chris said and I'm like I'm a pretty I'm a pretty political person as a whole and I'm sometimes particularly sensitive to things and I'm sometimes not but when it comes straight down to it your intent is what should derive the meaning of the word when it's being used and I'm also a firm believer of the statement that if you're I mean I, I've said this many times uh you're the one that gets offended by the word, so you're the one giving it the power and the meaning. Um, I I also understand there are some words that when and I mean this goes all over the place. Uh, if you go into an environment where you shouldn't be using a, a slur uh, or a racial word, and then you use it, and then somebody calls you out on it, and then you use it more, you're kind of a shithead. Yeah. Um, unless you dislike them as a person and you ha- or a- as a race or as a group of people and that's your firm belief and you're still probably a shithead. But at least like if you're doing it ignorantly, it shouldn't be as offensive. It shouldn't be worth boycotting because mm-hmm. especially if it's something that's the name of like, like a Pachyosaurus. Like, uh-huh. if, if you're being offended by something being called a Pachyosaurus, or shortening it to Packy. Uh, and shortening it to Packy. Like, I mean, come on. People are fucking lazy. They're yeah. going to shorten everything to as short as they can. And I don't mean this in, like... like oh, just just it, look at dinosaurs to help support your theory. Tyrannosaurus yeah. Rex. T-Rex. A Velociraptor. Yeah, well, especially in, in, even in the context of the movie, these things have been around. The park's been open for 10 years. They're not just going to keep on, like... Calling it by its full name, dinosaurs have super long, crazy names. They even yeah. say in the movie they named it Indominus Rex because it's easy. Yeah. <laughs> like, if, if somebody asked me to stop calling it a packy, and I was running that, I would be like, "Oh, if this is actually offensive, then yeah, no problem." Yeah. No. Agreed. Like that makes sense. I don't want to offend people by mm-hmm. accident. Blah blah blah. But. In a situation like this where you're boycotting a movie that you can't really change without a whole lot of effort, like, it, it, the intent was not to degrade the Pakistani people. No. 
Like the intent was to shorten the name because that's the way that slang works, especially in American language, which this movie was written. And yeah, I would say I don't get me wrong. I love political topics, but this one is definitely like it's reaching, isn't it? It feels reaching. Yeah, I I feel like it was a way to tie and. Uh, I almost feel bad saying it. It almost feels like it's a way to tie this guy's name to controversy to get more attention. And I, I don't know who it was that said it, and I don't want to say that that was their intent, but like it feels it feels stretched. And again, we are four white guys talking about a racial issue, yeah. um, especially an American oppressive racial issue. Yeah. Um, um, as he's so. falling asleep real quick, LB, you got anything to say on it? I've had quite a few thoughts, but I've... I think you guys have summed it up pretty well. I mean, um, like you're saying, it's just an issue of it's a cultural misunderstanding. I mean, it's an, let's face it, it's an American-made movie, American producers, American film writers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And you're saying this is a racial slur in the U.K., in just one country as far as we know, maybe several well, others. May, maybe, maybe... Like several countries, Europe altogether. Europe. You know? Well, let's just let's just assume that for now, because you know that's what we do. We're America. Right, but it's not a it's not a in the English language. It's not commonly accepted throughout the English language as a racial slur. Obviously, it's not a racial slur here in the U.S. as far as we're aware. Yeah. So, it part of it's yeah, I guess ignorance, but again, it's just a cultural. It's that's just how it is. I mean, we're, you can't we can't be aware of every single other cultures. Um, slang words for things. I mean, when uh, I love this one. When uh, the last Airbender movie uh, was in, <laughs> when that premiered in the UK, it got a lot of laughs because they they said Bender a lot, and Bender in the UK is a uh, euphemism for a, a gay person. So, <laughs> well, that brings up a really good point. Where I was like, I wanted to comb through this guy's stuff. I I if I thought of it, and I was like, all right, let's just be a little bit dickish here okay and let's comb through his stuff because if he's a comedian or a rapper i'm pretty sure i could probably find uh, based off of just you know basics and like guessing because you know the, the the society of of that medium for both comedic and that is that he might smoke cigarettes mm -hmm. and i would love to see if he called them the uk slang for a cigarette which is don't get offended people a fag i don't know if that's so much the slang anymore. It, well, it, it was. was in the 90s. Yeah, you know, it was yeah. that. I wanted to know if maybe he did. And their core, and be like, dude, check your stuff before you start, you know, bit, bitching about people. But then I realized being petty like that wasn't worth, worth my pre precious time and said fuck it all and just brought it up to you guys. That's just me. Yeah. So, so, so concludes four white American dudes talking about other people's racial yeah. slurs. <laughs> Again, it comes up to I would like to know where, when, generally this racial term became part of pop culture and became part of hate, versus when the Pachyosaurus was named. I, I don't think it. It's not that important, it, but that's just it, me. In the working. American language, I don't know if many people in America ever considered Pachy to be. No, because we're, we're dumb Americans. Just call them all Middle Easterns. Exactly. Like, I mean, a Pachy derm is an elephant. Yeah. It's also a strain of wheat. Yeah. So like there's there's which many. It's just short for Pakistani, but it's just short. It's that's what language does. Lang language as you evolve in language, you shorten terms because people understand what you're talking about when it's the most used item in a language. I don't I don't think it's intended to be insulting. No, it was never intended to be insulting because they were directly for referring to a dinosaur that they then showed on screen. Yeah. multiple times so it's just it, you know birch uh, birch nailed it on the head with intent yeah I, th I think he had it from the first comment like he, and then we rambled for 20 minutes because we're white american dumbasses we like attention what of it <laughs> we're making a youtube show of course we okay. like attention let's get meta um so our final topic tonight reeling it back off the political side because if you want political stuff go watch something else like the fucking news we're not here for that we're here for entertainment i might is, eventually make a podcast i would love to be on it i'll have fun it's fun um it's uh my problems with the bat god which is a, 
uh, probably we're going to lose a lot of people on, but in current pop culture, Batman is a bat god. He cannot be stopped. He cannot okay. be killed. And it's to a point that it's upsetting me. Case in point, not too long ago, there was a point where apparently all of the Justice League got brainwashed and tried to kill Batman. At which point, the next comic should have been the death of Batman. There was this comic called Batman vs. Darkseid. And if you don't know who Darkseid is, he's basically the Thanos version for DC. In which the next comic should have been called The Death of Batman. The Death of Batman. But no. I feel Um, like that should be an appropriate movie Oh, sorry. Go for it, it. It's it's nothing against. I'm I'm. I'll, I'll open it up to you guys in a minute here. It's sorry. nothing against the idea of Batman fighting Superman and winning. So if you're upset about the movie, it's just this idea that currently Batman. Okay, this is this is the way I said it. You know, when we were growing up, we hated Superman because he was all powerful and couldn't be stopped. Nowadays. We don't hate Superman as much anymore because he's boring, but we glorify Batman because he is unbeatable and can't be stopped. So therefore, he's become the new Superman because the writers and we lost Birch. I we, thought he was just being very still. Uh, we're calling him back right now. His internet sucks. Don't worry about it. Um, it just you know well, the it, sexy picture. Sorry. It's just, yeah, it's just the idea that this. Um, <laughs> Well, I'm going to see if his picture loads in. Can you hear us, buddy? Yeah. We lost you. Don't worry about it. Are we? It. Um, We're good. We're still good. Okay. We're still going. It's just the idea that now Batman, out of sure laziness of writers, can beat anybody. And there you, are, you, there are you, uh... moments in history that I enjoy. Like, there's one time he reeled against the Justice League, and they sent Green Lantern to go talk to him. And he literally painted everything in the room yellow and was drinking lemonade just to piss off Hal Jordan. And I think that's generally funny, but at the same time, it's a part of Batman's psyche that should be explored that he can't trust anybody. Mm-hmm. You know, and no one's willing to touch it. So I'm guessing to you guys, do you have a problem with the Bat God that he cannot be stopped? It's funny you mention uh, the Bat God, use that term specifically. Um, do you read Endgame? Have you been reading Batman Endgame? I won't spoil anything here, but basically Batman makes this really big sacrifice at the end of Endgame, and DC just started the new run of the Batman comics, and Batman is uh, actually be going to become a literal god in the first issue. Well, meanwhile, Superman has lost... And we, lost your, we lost your yeah, volume. lost your audio. Oh. Okay. No, well, if, no, back. Yeah, Superman has lost his powers in the same arc, so he's essentially now just a guy, while Batman is a god. I, yeah. Is it like a kryptonite fucking sponge or something? I don't know. It's again, it's it comes down to like somebody. No, don't, that's not saying anything. This, the whole know. thing came down to like people talking about like who would win in a fight, so and so versus so and so, and the answer is always Batman would win if he had time to prep. And I'm like, no. No, Shut Spider-Man up. would win if he had time to prep. Actually, Spider-Man would beat Batman head-on right away. And, in fact, I could probably and name... And if they had time to prep. And if he had time to prep, Spider-Man is just smarter. Um, yeah, I'm, well, I'm mean, throwing that out there. They're, they're on a similar level of intelligence, except Spider-Man actually has superpowers, and they're both really fucking smart. And he would counter the shit out of all of Batman's moves. And just out of this, allow me to uh, nerd out real quick. I hate that I do that every time. I'm all, I'm all about it. <laughs> um, you know, the, the idea of a spider sense, you know. Yeah. The, he would be able to, in the dark, if Batman was throwing stuff at him, he'd still be able to dodge out of the way, blah, blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And uh, I don't know. It's just the idea that this Batman is unkillable really pisses me off. Because if you say, like, you know, this comes up all the time, Batman versus Superman. If Superman was really trying to kill him, he would be dead. Yeah. Well, I would say 99% of the time, yes. It also depends on what version of Superman you're talking right. about. Let's go with because... revamped 1980s redone where he doesn't have as much power. Okay, but let's so... say Superman was still saying, I'm going to kill Batman. I'm going to do a 50-mile Is... punch at, However... the speed of, at the top speed. Even if Batman had a kryptonite ring, that doesn't come into effect until like a, maybe a split second before punching him. But 
depending on what version of Superman, kryptonite contact can actually potentially kill Superman. Being around it can cripple him to the point of where he's almost a normal human. Okay. Depending on what version of but, like as I said, but all of them seem to there's take so many versions of Superman yeah. that it's really hard to gauge because at some point Superman is able to push a kryptonite comet out of orbit. And out. sometimes he's faster than the Flash and can turn Bullshit. back time. Okay, okay. Let's let's and, let's not use Superman points, real quick. Let's yeah, use but, let's use somebody that's a little bit more grounded and has, like I said, Batman versus the Flash. Who? I mean, I know who I'd vote for, but who? I'd go for the Flash. Yep. LB. <laughs> the Flash can run so fast. <laughs> he can that break he can, dimensions. Not only can he break time, but he can phase through physical objects. Not only can he phase through physical objects, he can stop phasing through physical objects and has the physical awareness to know where he's at. So he could be running so fast that he can run through buildings and then grabs fucking Batman's heart and keep running. Can I be like, honest with you right now? Yeah. yeah, I would love there, it. There's a reason I don't read comic books much. Is it because of the overpowered bullshit? It's, it's because they're dumb. Yeah, it's because they don't set rules and follow them. If they do set rules, they break them all the time. What are the extents? What's the extent of the Flash's powers? Nobody I guarantee knows. you they're not the same as they were 20 years ago. Superman had break. Not even the same as they were 10 years ago. I don't really know. But the extent of this... I mean, you keep you just mentioned earlier about how in the 80s, Superman was nerfed, revamped right? 90s? 70s? I don't remember. There, when there, was, was, a, there was, was a period revamp. of time where he was there, weak. But I'm not, all these I'm constant reboots, these constant complete universe revamps. shifts... Revamps, New Fifty Two, etc., Ultimate, etc., etc. So I guess you'd have to say, at their best, who would win, or at it, their strongest. It's like you can't even argue it. Well, that's you, you that's can't. not even funny because then at their strongest, Batman would win because Batman's unkillable. That's yeah. that's that's literally people's attitude right now. But that's their attitude. That's not the literature, man. Like, <laughs> like this isn't okay. I'm not trying to turn again. I'm sorry that I, I do this every now and then. That you're saying, man. That I, I become like this DC basher, but I really love Marvel because I have this run over there where Spider-Man gets in a two-day fight with this new character who then they abused called Morlin. They abuse the shit out of him later because he's in like the Spider-Verse and the other and it's really dumb. But the first, first appearance is great because Spider-Man gets in like this two-day fight because Morlin won't leave him alone. And like he's literally tracking his essence. Is Morlin the mage guy? He's like the mage vampire who sucks okay, the superheroes. Yeah. He's it's a great issue because he's literally like here's Spider Man calling in sick from his like second day of teaching and like he hangs up the phone and like he doesn't have a back shirt, his mask is ripped up and his hair's froed out. And he's just like, All right, let's do this and he's just getting his ass kicked over and over and over again. And when he finally defeats Merlin, he passes out for a week straight. Because he's so tired, and that's when like Aunt May finds out he's Spider Man. Because he passes out and like he wakes up to eat food and then falls back asleep. I'm like, because he's reached his peak, you know? He talks about, yeah, I can beat the Hulk just by wearing him out, but I can't beat this guy because he doesn't get worn out. Does the Hulk really get worn out? Uh, he runs out of gamma radiation. Okay. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's the sense that if you last long enough for the radiation in his blood to kind of get – loses nope. its, it, it's, it's a, a, a power. Potency. Potency, Do you have to stop pissing him off and just kind of like let I, him beat the fuck out of you for a while? Or? You just kind of keep running. Okay. It. I mean, Hulk's another great one because I love the idea of Hulk not being able to pick up Thor's hammer, but then picks up the world around Thor's hammer. I, I actually really liked that. I feel like that's appropriate to the mythos on all fronts. Yeah. But, but that's just because I like... I really like Norse mythology. I really <laughs> like Thor. I don't think Thor in the comics is what i want to see but i love norse mythology let's, let's reel it back to batman now because i went sorry, thought, sorry, I, sorry i derailed that was me uh let's bring it over to birch because he's been quiet what do you think the problem with bat god is uh really it's just it's too easy to be like 
hey, Batman's the coolest one, so let's just... And the, it, Okay, here's an example. Here, here's a comparison. The world decided that Wolverine was the coolest X-Man. I disagree, but the world just is fighting for it. And because of that, we have these Wolverine solo movies. And I don't like them, because Wolverine was never intended to be the main character. He works as a side guy who does his thing. He's the Han Solo of the X-Men. And Batman is kind of that way to me. I don't think, I mean, I'm not saying he shouldn't get his solo stuff or whatever, but I don't think Batman should be this be-all, end-all superhero. He is awesome. Batman's just damn awesome. He is. But one of the reasons he's awesome is because he can hold his own even as a human with no superpowers. And when all of a sudden it's like, well, he may as well have superpowers because he just fucking flew. And because he is not even being worn down by this, and it's just, and being unkillable. So it just takes away some of the appeal of Batman, and I don't want that to happen because it's Batman. And I don't want him to lose his appeal. Yeah. So. Uh, again, I don't know. It's. There are some great moments where. In, in in history that I can think of, there's like maybe an animated series one where I think he gets captured, loses his utility belt, and um, like spends the whole episode trying to fight X villain, and like he loses his cape halfway through, and it stuck with me because it shows that he can persevere over these things because these aren't like his villains aren't super powerful. That's why they aren't super powerful. That's why they have these interesting traits. That's what's make them great. Mm -hmm. And then you look at things like both Arkham Asylum has great moments where it shows Batman getting his ass kicked but persevering, but also this Bat-God mythology where he thought of everything ahead of time by all of a sudden having a bat cave on Arkham Asylum because I knew like something like this would happen eventually instead of going, I got this tech, maybe I can use it to do this, where it shows where Batman really shines. And that's... Mm -hmm. Batman needs to take a step back in pulp culture to get him back in alignment to the idea of I'm a guy dressed as a bat to scare criminals, and then the criminals started dressing up to scare me. Yeah. I, I've, I've interjected a lot, uh, but my actual opinion on it is very similar to both of you guys on that front, where Batman can lead like the Justice League on the sense that he is the idea guy and he's the clever guy. Because a lot of the other heroes just aren't that level of clever. And he's managed to overcome a lot of weird things. But let's be completely honest, Superman can live in the sun. S like, Spider-Man has super speed, super strength, rege slight regenerative abilities, and is also pretty freaking smart. The Green Lantern, that ring... Willpower is yeah. all it takes. Yeah, I would say... What, if you what are makes, more determined to kill Batman, you win. <laughs> what makes Batman the badass in America is the fact that he's the clever underdog... And everyone can relate to being able to outthink other people because we're American. <laughs> and I mean, that might be me being a little bit cynical, but that's really what, in my mind, it boils down to. I love me some Batman, too. I'm not going to lie. But if I was going to write a movie about Batman fighting Superman, guess what? Batman dies in the first four seconds. Guess what? Batman doesn't have laser reflective fucking armor. Superman can fly into the sun, come back, and burn a fucking hole through Batman's heart. Because one, he's faster than Batman. Two, he has laser eyes. He can also breathe fucking ice. Like, the, I mean, I don't mean to get as worked up as I am about it, but seriously. I like Batman. Batman does not win in a fight against Superman. Batman does not win in a fight against Spider-Man. Batman right. does not win in a fight against Green Lantern. Batman is the underdog. It's the American story. America wants to see the weak guy that's clever win. The, the corporate industrialist. 
<laughs> the hip society's leeches. <laughs> it's all a metaphor. It's all and, a metaphor. And I and I don't like I I don't want to be that cynical, but it's just the way it is, as far as I'm concerned. I like again. I like all of the characters I just mentioned, but Batman, he's not going to win in a fight against any of those guys if they're actually trying to kill him. There's no way. And with that, I think we're done. Does anybody have anything else to add? No, I think that's I think, it for me. I think oh. I've drank plenty enough for both Chris's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, all two viewers of you, one of them being me, <laughs> for sticking around for this long. We enjoyed doing it. This is our podcast. Uh, say bye, everybody. It was fun, bye, guys. Bye, everybody. Goodbye. We'll catch you next time. Yeah, we did a thing. Sorry, I got a little ranty and kind of drunk. That's fine. That's fine. But I feel like that was a pretty good rant to end it. <laughs> yeah, it was good. I was.